Oh, working deep into the night. And yet, now we need more wine. Who gets that reference? So here's what I've done. Let's see if it's uh, still not noisy. Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah. I didn't even have to change the resistor. Okay, so uh, let me show you what I did here. So you don't need a separate transformer to run DC. It doesn't sound any noisier. Where's my little wood stick? So right here, we have these pilot light connections that pass uh, the uh, six volts DC outwards. And I have gone and I have attached them to the DC power supply that was in here. So we have our DC heaters up front now, but they're running off the same supply. I've seen DC circuits in other amplifiers before and they're off the same heater circuit. You don't need a whole separate transformer. However, due to the nature of how the circuit in here works for the foot switching, you need a separate transformer for that. Mostly because I could not find an isolated jack. I got no plastic jacks in stock to isolate the foot switch from ground. So it has to be grounded. So it has to have its own isolated situation. So I've taken this transformer that they added. I've connected that. And even though it's 12 volts, it appears to be working. And that's funny because I didn't make any compensations here. This resistor right here is the voltage drop resistor for that circuit. Let us see what kind of voltage drop we are seeing across this resistor. 165. And that's a 75 ohm resistor. So 1.65 volts divided by 75 ohms. Do I got that right? 22 milliamps it's consuming right now to keep those uh, relays fired, which is probably in their, max, their minimum threshold. Ideally, we might want a bit more than that. 1.65 voltage drop from, well, what voltage are we starting with here? Because it's a 6.3 volt, but... 7.45. So those tra those little uh, dealy doos are running on 5.8 volts. Ah, uh, 75 ohms. Do I have something I can use to bring that up a bit? What's half of 75? 37. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly, that's a 39 ohm. There you go. Let's um, pull that out of there and see what happens. Cause like little relays like that are probably about 30 to 40 milliamps a piece. So I should be draining, you know, upwards of 80 milliamps through this circuit. Now, fortunately, we got solder pads on here that are so gaping large, we barely have to be able to actually get to the underside of the board to actually remove it. Yeah, get that out of there. Come on now, come on. You know you wanna. Okay, she is removed. I'm gonna put just the slightest dollop of fresh solder in that hole. So you get it all nice and moist and suck it out. Now, one of the reasons why they do this separate tom uh, foolery with the separate power supplies to run the switching circuit is so that they can ground out the circuit. So that that switching circuit has the same potential to ground anything you plug into it external of the box. Now it's a low voltage system, so it's not the biggest problem in the world. You know, I don't know, maybe if you're drunk and spill beer on your foot switch and Tactically, if you touch your guitar to your foot switch at the same time and your foot switch chassis gets electrified, you'd pass six volts through you, maybe. Not that that voltage is enough to really hurt you. Uh, it might just be electrical code. But if we could isolate this foot switch jack, make it plastic, I already checked and analyzed the circuit. Nothing else on the foot switching circuit is tied to ground. All we have to do to isolate it is to replace that with one of those plastic jacks. And then we could simply over here, use those PL outputs, jump them over to here and boom. Now, where's my little corrected resistor? 39 ohms, shoehorn that. Oh, oh, they sound more, yeah, they sound more, uh, oof, oof. they got more oomph now. Let's check voltage drop. Voltage drop is 0 0.94, 24 milliamps, really, that's it? Well, that's not much different than we had before. Okay, you're screwing with me, this can't be right. 23 milliamps. 23 milliamps to fire both of those guys? Well, let's double check the part numbers here. Okay, what's the part number on these FX103-2C-12L? No, oh, they come up uh, in the Chinese spectrums. It's entirely possible they're 12 volt rated coils. 
Either way, they appear to be working now. And this thing's working well enough now, I can probably, you know, button this chassis back up. Yeah, and then play it for a little while, I guess, until I need that transformer back. Yeah, R19. What's R19? Connected to V4? 100k. Whoa, 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 whoa. They changed the value of a resistor. They changed the value on the freaking recovery for the, that shouldn't be like that. Come on now. I'm looking at this R19. It's on the effects loop recovery circuit. They made it a 220k when it's supposed to be a 100k. Why would you want to boost the gain on the recovery circuit unless you're trying to hack more distortion in there? Or make up for volume loss because of the diode clipping? I, I don't want that like that. Get out of there. Get 220k on a recovery circuit. Get serious. The amp sounds fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy wuzzy like a bear. Need to clean up its tone a bit if it's gonna be worth a damn. Oh look, it's the 100k I pulled out of that half arsed uh, voltage mod that was in here. Hey, that hole is not empty yet, so. Here's hoping the standby works on this the way it should. I'm working on the amp hot right now. Now let's get that in there. Okay. Is there anything else in here you've changed that shouldn't be good? R46 has changed. C32 has changed to a 4.7. What is C32? C32 is supposed to be a 1U. Oh, is that a reason why it's kind of warm and farty? Usually that's the kind of thing you'd change to a 0 0.68. Maybe I don't like a 4.7 there. I don't know, what's R46? R46 is a 220. Oh, they brought it down to 100K. Well, that that's something I could agree with, maybe? Tame the gain a little bit? Uh, when you erase that value, it theoretically increases the amount of distortion that that gain stage generates. So, they're trying to tame the front end, but what, they made it up back over here? Whatever, we'll solder this 4939 ohm into place because clearly this is gonna work. Leaving the legs long because I don't want to commit resistors that I are good new stock to me. R30 looks different. What do you figure R30 was? It looks like it has something to do with V3. R28 is supposed to be a 220. Looks like they left that one. That's a weird place for 220K. What do they do in the actual Soldano? Oh yeah, it's a 220K on the Soldano. And the first one's a 220K on the Soldano also. If you don't know, the Jet City's supposed to kind of be like, you know, a Chinese copy of the Soldano. It's made by Soldano. Well, it's designed by Soldano. Big difference, I guess. Where's R30? Oh, oh, R30 is the gooseneck. That's the 220-330K uh, pattern. Okay, so they changed that to a one meg. Really? Wait, this schematic has two R32s. Derp. So they made that one meg, eh? Hmm, that might be why it sounds sloppy, because they screwed with the attenuation in that area. I'm getting into things, if you haven't noticed. R38 over here looks different too. Why did you use such a dinky tiny we're doing surgery on a Jet City amp. That's supposed to be a 330K, right? Yeah, I have some 330Ks in stock, yes. Sorry about them putting your mods back to where they probably should be. Trying to clean up the tone on this a bit. I gotta admit, the diode clipping mod after playing with it is kind of neat. You can flick that on there and get a completely different kind of voice out of the amp. It's 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 neat. What else does it look like they changed in here? Mmm, Dishka R38. The value they put in there is 2.7k R38. Where's that's supposed to be 1.8k. So they've decreased the gain on this because that's also something that tames. Okay, I'm. This thing has so much gain on it, so much distortion, I'm okay with mods that decrease it. So we'll leave that 2.7K. Still don't know how I feel about this 4.7K cathode bypass. Ooh, is the resistor next to it? No, that's a 1.8K. Okay, that's good. 4.7 cathode bypass. Mmm, non-standard insertion. Well, let's see how it sounds now. Where's the pick? Oh, come on now. Isn't that just always how it is? Where's the pick? Where's the pick? Funny thing is, I know I have two picks in here. Oh. That sounds better already. You'll excuse me, I don't have the mic set up anymore in front of the amp.
So what happens if we put it in martial mode? Which which position on this switch turns it to uh, 10K? I think it is down. I need to check the impedance on this switch actually. Impedance on the switch. This side's not hooked up to anything, so we can just figure out what switch positions are what. Okay, so it's an opposing switch as I suspected. Yeah, switching it in the downmost position should give us a martial like cathode bypass. Not cathode bypass. Cold clip. Oh God, now it actually sounds good. are still a bit off compared to what I'm used to. But then the strings on that guitar are pretty darn worn out at this point. So now I'm curious about one more thing. What happens if we change this cathode bypass back to something more what it's supposed to be? A one megafarad. And C28 is a one NF. Where's C28? Since when do we have one NF? 0 0.001. A one NF as a cathode bypass. I haven't seen that one before. C28, where are you? C28, where are you? R39. Oh, something suspicious is going on with R39. We have a, oh boy. Okay, what's R39? R39 is the 100K over top of this gain stage, stage two. They changed that to a 220 also. They basically put 220s all over this pupper. And then they put a little, a little 150P over top of it. Hmm, okay, okay. Doesn't sound too bad yet though. Supposed to be 100K, curious about that. Still, where's our R28? C28, it's probably, oh, it's right here. So that's stock. Hmm, so not really any bypass there, but I have heard word of changing that to a 068. What does Soldano do? They use a 1UF. 1UF, 1UF 39, 1UF. 1UF, 1NF 39, 1UF. Hmm. Uh, what does the Bobo annotation say? Post cold clip, that is a 68 there. And that is a 68. Hmm, we're getting, we're going down the voicing rabbit hole here. I bought some 68 NFs and they're absolute units. Can we rig that on there some way to kind of influence this tune? Kind of jam it in there, bud. Just, just j j jam it in there. Is that gonna work? That made it more muddy, bud. More muddy, buddy. More muddy, buddy. That made it more muddy, buddy. Okay, get this 4.7 out of here. Cause I don't feel like that was ever a good idea. Unless it was this guy's personal preference. Making it a bit muddy like that, a bit <laughs> kind of does give it that crank damp effect because let's face it, those old amps when you crank them, they sounded good, but they, got, they could get sloppy. Okay, we took a hit to the gain sensitivity a bit. Can we kinda, can we kinda six, eight in there? Come on. There we go. I prefer the sound of that. 
So like the very first gain stage you have here, it is not distorting yet. It is directly proportional to the frequency response of your guitar and the touch sensitivity of your guitar. By putting a 4.7 bypass in there, when you put a bypass capacitor in there, it does this thing where it influences what frequencies get amplified, right? Because you know, this, this resistor is throttling back the current flow through here, but then this is letting current, you know, bypass in certain frequencies or current can actually go through resist a, a capacitor but uh, I'm not gonna get into the theory of how a capacitor works a 0.68 is is an industry standard to put in there, if not the one UF. So it's no surprising I'm liking the mid frequency crunch better with this guy. I want to cut and print that mod. Ugh come on man open that hole. Where's that hole full because you just kind of clipped out what was in there before? Or is that trace broken? Is that what's going on here? There's something else in that hole. The old capacitor was still in there. Continuity checked. Those two holes are still connected. That trace could be damaged. No, that trace is still good. All right, now let's see if we can finagle this cap into place. <laughs> it's just gonna float there. It's just gonna float there. Again, I'm not committing any components to this build until like we know what's going on. Okay. Okay, now what? This one NF here. What? Why? Why is that such a small value? Maybe we'll like it better. So that's a pretty high frequency bypass, 0 0.1. All right, what's it sound like with that bypass removed? Cause yeah. <laughs> liking the sound of this amp now that I've uh, undone some of this crap. Uh, this has such a subtle change. Let's uh, snap her back in there and see what difference that made. Having trouble deciding what I like better. There is this subtle high frequency crunch that's added. Subtle, subtle. Hmm, that's a hard one. Oh no! Looks like I need to order more one UFs. I got like one left. Oh, which side's the ground side? Um. Okay, we're gonna have to test. Okay, we should uh, do this with standby on. <laughs> There should be a ground connection. What the frick? I'm not getting any ground continuity. Hello? Ground continuity. Where are you? Wait, something ain't right. I think the schematic's wrong. Oh, they did it again. C28? C28. Herp -a derp derp derp. That's not even a bypass cathode. That is a bright cap. A 250 peak bright cap. You know what? Let's put her back in there. So where's our actual cathode bypass? That one NF. 38, right next to R38. Right here. R38, which has been changed to 2.7K. And we have a 105J right next to it. Well, boy, we're gonna start playing with values of bright caps, eh? Urgh, urgh. Get that cow out of there. Oh, I can't get at that solder joint. Ah, ah. The part's getting real hot. Freaking hell. I think getting that guy out of there is more trouble than it's worth. Except that I'm stubborn. That's the reason why I accomplish great things. All right, I got that pepperoni out. Now let's suck on those holes. So again, this is another place where the industry standard might use a 1U. Can we now determine which is ground side? Ground side towards chassis. Right, industry standard going in. 1U, cathode bypass. Hopefully that's uh, situating itself nice. Oh. It's darker now. How about a, a big wonk in 220? That's always fun.
Too dark and dirty. Hmm. I don't like the sound of the one U in there. Maybe it was more trouble than it's worth. How about again the 68? <laughs> Actually sounds pretty good. I think I get why people change those to 68s. Still a touch on the warm side. Where did the one or the one NF go? I want to compare it again. Well, guy looks like a cow goes mo. Cause maybe they had the right. Oi! Juicy? It's, it's more grindy, more It's got more and the harmonics feel better. Okay, we gotta get back to that one, cause that one's, it has an interesting effect. It's like, I could go either way on that one. Either way sounds good to me. How about C28? Okay, we'll leave C28 in place. It sounds pretty good. No, I'm, I'm pretending. I'm not actually electrocuting myself. I might one day, knock on wood. I think this table's made by my grandfather out of real wood. I'm just too damn comfortable working inside of these things. <laughs> now, what about this this R39 debauchery here? We got a snubber cap. They put a snubber cap on there. We got to go into standby for this one because that one's high voltage. Snubber caps are not our friend. Unless we're getting too bright and waspy, then they could be our friend. Problem is that snubber cap's a 150p. Hmm. Snubber caps, they tend to kill some of the high end, but then they can kill high end in a good way, you know? They can get rid of some of the ice picks, but then, you know, they can also damage your harmonic content. They're commonly used though. A lot of guys are using them in their amps these days. I remember when I first cloned a Mesa, it's just like, geez, what are all these strange capacitors up there? I ultimately, for my own variation of the design, ended up removing most of them, all of them, I think. But then some of my amp designs, once I feel like I hit that sweet spot, they tend to be bright and they sound great at low volumes, but then once I turn them up, they're just so uh, the circuit's not gonna work without something there. It's supposed to be 100K stock. All sorts of ugly hundo hundos. Let's go in sticker in there. Oh, it is officially way past midnight. I am off schedule now. <gasps> will that work without us soldering it down? It will. Okay, carefully now, carefully. This is the high voltage right here, bud. Let's try putting uh, our 220P config back into place. Okay, you know what? It adds a subtle bit of saturation that I like. I, I think I might like that particular mod. However, that guy is the top of this guy. So where we were screwing with the one hunt one NF, the 39K is at the top of that. So what happens with another combination? We'll put the uh, the 68 back in here on the bottom and we'll put the hundo back on top. Damn, this is stupid. Oh, the circuit's live right now. Huh, yeah, living dangerously. <laughs> Ah, 
it sounds more clean. What happens if we activate Marshall Cathode, Marshall Cold Clipper? <laughs> actually sounds pretty good now. Ah. But will it still say sounding good as we turn it up? That is the problem. All right, watch your ears, bud. Okay, 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 okay. We have some data to work with. Now let's switch it back to the other configuration that I'm kind of fond of, the Tutundo. Oh, oh, get in your hole. Stop knob crafting and popping and get in your hole. Oh boy. We're just torturing this machine now, aren't we? This is a little enough. Okay, I'm torn, bud. Because that's a good sound too. Almost debatably sounds a little bit better turned up. But then the other sounds a bit cleaner. Complete opposite of Edison level success here when you find more than one way to skin the cat. And I like cats, so I wouldn't be skinning cats unless it was absolutely necessary. You know what I'm thinking? With all the weird switch mods that they have on this, maybe that should be one. What's crunch sound like now? Crunch does not have anywhere near as much jam now because some of the gain mods we did took away from it. You know what though, it still works. Crunch without the clipping dials. Mid boost. You know, oh, crunchy clippy sounds pretty. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to like this thing, man. I think I'm just gonna buy a power transformer for it. Oh, but I owe Buddy a choke. I'm gonna need more transformers, but no doubt about it. Okay, I think I'm ultimately gonna go... Oh, there's some nice saturation on that 220 though. That 221 NF. Oh, it's a hard call. But we can pretty much resaturate it by using that cold clip mod that's here. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go turn this off first. 100K, 680. Poker through the hole, bud. Just poker through the hole. I'm getting tired. I need to call it a night. <laughs> but we have made some great progress here, sir. Oh boy, there was no intro. 
to this video because I didn't know I was gonna be making a, another video with this guy. I thought it was gonna be a quick amendum. And then I got sucked down the voicing rabbit hole. And now we are ending up with a pretty good amp, an amp that I kinda don't wanna take apart. Do I wanna keep it for myself? Ooh, I don't know, but another added to the collection? I guess I could say I have myself an SLO that I can, it's actually easy to work on this. Like the traces on the board are so gaping huge. It's actually easy to work on this. It's just tack on components from this side without having to take the whole board off. Now granted, there is certain margin of experience you need to do that. Uh, <laughs> you get Sloppy McSlopperson back in here and uh, you might make a bit more of a mess, but I'm not having such difficulties. So I hope that you enjoyed this and maybe it gave you some ideas for mods that you could do on your Jet City. It's hard for me to describe the mods that are there already. I guess I'd have to schematic it out or something. Is it even worth that trouble with how many subscribers and the monetization that I have? Not likely. So enjoy my videos for what they are right now. Go uh, join my Patreon if you want special privileges, like knowing exactly what I did. That's some nice clean sounding distortion we have gotten out of this amp now. And variety. Oh, that crunch mod with that clipping dials. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tasty, tasty, getting some old rock sounds. This amp won't do it normally, not on the normal overdrive channel, and then the crunch channel's just too tame. But then you add those clipping diodes on there and oh boy, bud, yeah, it's kind of like Jubilee. It's almost like I'm I'm having the ability to take three different amps that I might have and combine them into one here. Oh, this is turning out too good, but I digress. Stay tuned for more. Cause I'm not done with this whole amp stuff left. As near the after proof new problem, I'm getting loopy because I'm tired. Good night. Except I want to play guitar more now because this is fun. But everything's tacked back into place, so let's put her in the chassis and enjoy her for realsies. And I need to order some transformers. And enjoy her for realsies. Uh, and enjoy her for realsies. Hey, is the camera still rolling? This thing needs a bias mod.